This is Twit. I I don't know how I'm going to handle this kind of thing. I I I've, I've started writing about a lot of the SLM LLM releases as they occur, but what I've discovered is that one occurs approximately every 36 hours, and I'm not sure if I have the time or inclination to keep doing this. Right. And uh, in this vein, Microsoft, and I think tied to the previous story too, where in the sense that they kind of want to show that they can be independent as well. Right. Has uh, yesterday, I think. Yep. Yes, they released uh, an SLM, as I called it. No one else was calling it this at the time, but it is an SLM uh, that can run model. on phones. Yep, okay. uh, a small language model. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, f- this the weirdness of this because I because I cover news and I specifically cover AI stuff is there was there were no Microsoft announcements. Right, there was none. Now, by the way, as of as of this moment, there are. They, uh, 12 or 15 hours later, they finally posted okay. some stuff. But at the time, all that, all that Microsoft officially posted was an academic white paper, which I can tell you, fascinating reading. You'll love it. It's almost as good as the Lord. You need an app. This is the way. Yep. It's, uh, it's, it's brutal. I mean, even the font was designed to put you to sleep. It's crazy. But, um, <laughs> but what they did do was they reached out to every mainstream news organization on earth to see who would bite. And they right. all did. Like the New York Times wrote a 2,500 word article about how Microsoft is bringing language models down to the phone, mm. which not to be a jerk about it is what everyone is doing. <laughs> there is nothing unique right. about this at all. Um, now in, in some slice of time, the, the claim they make, which is a very common claim for this kind of thing is that they're seeing the performance reliability, blah, 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 whatever of chat GPT 3.5, which we all know is mm. like an older, LLM that ran it yeah. and it runs in the it cloud. Works pretty well, especially on an narrow. Works days. pretty well, and for something like that on a phone or whatever device, yeah, mm-hmm. not nothing. There's nothing wrong with that. It's excellent. The problem is everyone's doing this. Everyone, and anyone who makes language models is doing this exact thing. And mm-hmm. every single time one of these things is announced, the claims are always the same. They make the cl- they do that comparison depending on what type of language model is it is if, if if it's an LLM, the target is always Chat GPT. Right. Sometimes Gemini of whatever stripe. Uh, if it's an SLM, we're going after, um, what are we going after? I don't know where we're going. We're going after the previous version of chat GPT, right? This is the comparison because AI is moving so fast. And I, to me, the story here was not that Microsoft released an, another SLM, <laughs> but right. rather that, uh, the way they, they, they were like, how, how do we not get lost in the news cycle? Because when, when a day goes by and by the way, a day went by and another one was announced. I don't know if it was meta or me, somebody announced another one and I didn't look. And I, I will, because I can't help myself, but I bet it, I bet it's better than this damn thing that Microsoft released yesterday because oh, it's no. a day later, but whatever, that doesn't that, matter. How would you even bench that? Like, how do you know? I know? Well, just based on their, in other words, I would compare like how they say how much it is or is not better than something, something, and then see where I can compare. But I, I'm, because look, it's only, I've been doing this for two weeks and I can already tell you it's the same thing over and over again. Yeah. So bravo to Microsoft. They got into Reuters. They got into the New York times. They, they, Normal people reading a paper, well, no, normal people don't read a paper, but normal people reading those publications, wherever they do it on their iPad or whatever, right. would have seen a story like, and thought, and maybe thought, because who knows, they don't know anything about this business. Like, oh my God, like there's been an advance. <laughs> and it's like, no, there hasn't. No. Uh, it's but, some noise. Uh, but yeah, so the Phi stuff, um, and I'm assuming that is how you pronounce it, yes. is uh, one of many examples of Microsoft flexing that, look, we, we, this has nothing to do with open AI. Yeah. You know? no, and, uh, and I think it's smart, but I also this is a move towards right sizing, right? Like I would be way more worried that we were yeah. still humming up this peak of inflated expectations. If they were right. talking about a GP, GPT five coming out, because where are you going to get oh, the data? Right? Like you've I already know. indexed what you'd index eight Chan. Now you think that's going to make it better? Like you've already indexed everything you can. There isn't another exponentially larger data set to be had. My favorite data story, which is now t- over 25 years old, was Jim Gray was still alive and working on the mm-hmm. SQL stuff at Microsoft, that genius. And mm-hmm. uh, they created something called the Terra server to show off SQL Server 7, which was the first in-house version of Microsoft's database. The, the previous right. ones were based on Sybase. And to prove the prowess of this thing, they had to come up with some gigantic data set. What were they going to use? So they just, someone came up with the idea, well, there are these company or the countries rather that at the time, it was not companies, it was countries that have satellites and they map the earth and we could go to them. We'll go to the United States. I'll be the best one. Mm-hmm. And uh, we'll get all of their geolocation data and we'll, we'll, we'll map the world. We'll call it Terra server. 
Right. So they went to the U.S. government. They got it. And the U.S. government said, you can have everything but the United States. They're like, okay. And then they went to the Russian government and they said, hey, we're doing this thing. And I said, you can have everything except for Russia. They're like, cool. Now we have the whole world. So <laughs> they combined that data. And that data took up on hard drives in a data center, something that was the size of like a, a Cape house. Like it was right. humongous. And I got it's to walk through it. You know, it was like a, a, a scene from Mission Impossible. Mm -hmm. Today, independent companies, do, you know, Google Maps, blah, 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 whatever. It's nothing, you know. So, yeah, how do you get data? Like, how, what's the version of that today? Yeah. I don't know. Every star in the sky, every <laughs> space bus spec in the, sky, in the space. I don't, I don't have no idea. I don't know where you go from here. Yeah. I don't know how you scale up. No, and I think that's the thing is they're not trying now. Now they're right-sizing. They're saying, hey, when we try and be the everything, we have yeah. more problems. And right. so now narrowing the scope and yep. sharpening the um, confidence numbers to say, hey, if you're, if you're below 85% you know makes... confidence, say you don't know. That's right. And and actually, the, um, the Microsoft, the SLM story we just kind of waltzed by um, mm -hmm. kind of plays into this because I think one of the competitive concerns for Microsoft has got to be that Google and uh, and or uh, Google Google and yeah sorry Google and Apple both have these own platforms. These are the mainstream kind of computing platforms for people. They're yeah. probably going to continue to be that you know in the future. A lot of that stuff's going to run on device, but they're going to do something in the cloud. Google has their own thing, Apple doesn't. So the people the companies are lining up. How does a company like Microsoft kind of break into this space? Mm -hmm. And honestly, I think it's going to be I'm going to call this vertical use cases for lack of a better term. Their uh, models, their SLMs, this thing or other things, whatever, there'll be one that's really good at something and another that's really good at this. And you're an app or a service maker, you're going to run it, something that runs on those phones and will run off the MPU on that device when it can and then do some cloud thing when it can't. Um, there's a there's a market opportunity there, right? Like where you're, you become the, because uh, every time you see these LLM, SLM announcements, there's always like, this is it's really good at this, you know? It's really, it's it, this, it nails this, you know? And I think that's, we're never going to stop talking about this. This will yeah. never end. You know, it's just going to evolve and evolve and evolve. And uh, no, it we'll could see. become plumbing, but not this week. You know? Yeah. No, it's too special use, uh, special case, I guess, or whatever right now. It's, still, at, it's evolving. Moment, too fast. You know, bit by bit, we don't talk about GitHub Copilot anymore. Everybody uses it. It just becomes a thing. Well, um, I, right. And I don't remember the number, but the adoption on that's off the charts is something like 55%. And it yeah, is because the returns are substantial. Yep. And uh, speaking of GitHub and success, goddamn, <laughs> you know, yeah, they've no. nailed it on that. I, it's, it. uh, it's perfect. And you know? they're the original. For, for I don't mean perfect as I, it's the perfect combination of things. Like it's the right, it's the right solution. Like it's, it's I a, mean that it's perfect. It's a great sure it's data set um, yep. with a skilled customer base. The compiler gets to say, like, there's many advantages and it's just another form of automation that from, for a group of people who make most of their living creating automations. But what about all the compiler maker jobs we're losing, Richard? Do you have any concerns about that? Yeah, both of them, right? <laughs> oh boy. Okay. You know, I'm not, um, I know compiler people, they really only want to work on compilers. They don't. I'm just starting to think like that. I always use it when people talk about job losses. I always say, remember we used to have a woman in a, a low cut dress walking around with a tray where she would sell like cigarettes and stuff. Do we, yeah, cigars, we worried about that job? Cigarettes, Tiburillos. I mean, sometimes in, with the percept, uh, the uh, back, the looking back, mm -hmm. you can say like, ah, maybe that wasn't such a great job. <laughs> like, Actually, you know, we're, we're spending our time doing. We're doing better things. A lot of coding people love writing compilers. That's a great little hobby. Writing your own compiler. I don't know. I mean, how you know what? I've I used, but if you're doing this as a uh, hobby, yeah, I would say <laughs> you're a nerd. Well, a get outside, <laughs> idiot. But no, I would say no. Uh, there's a whole, actually there's a whole wellspring of ideas there because you there's often all these do it legacy. in uh, computer science courses. I mean, that's a very common assignment. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, stuff. but I mean, I would like make a real world something. Like, what if you could like, bring um, C sharp to the Commodore sixty four or something or well, whatever? You know, like, do idea. something awesome. Yeah. I mean, you know, do something like that, like create a, not just the language, but the, you know, obviously the compiler and all that stuff, the environment, the runtime, and then, um, you know, a framework that lets you target the specific capabilities of that device. Right. Like, you know, if you want to kill a weekend, I mean, I'm just saying, yeah, I would probably be really good at that. The <laughs> 6502 is really well known, you know, yep. you could do this. I think Hanselman was, uh, decoding some old five and a quarter inch C64. Yes, I saw that. I saw it literally on Facebook. He's like, yeah. does anybody... 
just throwing it out there. Does anyone have like a five and a quarter inch disk drive I could borrow? <laughs> like, what about, that one. Like, dude, hey, he got it to you're work. a father. Do something. It's I don't, know, like, what are you doing? Man. Like, What's he's daddy doing? Oh, it's important work, is it? No, um, no I think that's cool. That's Hey, it's me, Leo Laporte. I hope you've enjoyed this little snippet from Windows Weekly. If you want to see more and want to catch the whole show, you can subscribe in your favorite podcast client or visit our website, twit.tv slash WW. And of course, there's links right below me.